Hello everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B Show and we are the program that loves to help you look after your mental health and well-being. On today's show we'll be speaking about the effects of absent parents on a child's life and in particular absent fathers. According to the Huffington Post a lot can go wrong for children who are seen little or nothing of their dad, with those from disadvantaged backgrounds the most vulnerable. A report by the Prison Reform Trust last year found that 76% of all men in prison in England had an absent father. And according to a study by the University of Bristol, girls whose biological fathers were absent during the first five years of their childhood had an increased risk of symptoms of depression. This is something that our real life story guest Paola Mateus will be telling us about, who believes that it was her father leaving that triggered mental health issues developing. Also on the show today, we have our resident psychologist, Dr. Audrey Tang, talking about the effects of absent fathers and how children themselves can be helped. And we also have Severine Menem to talk about seasonal fruits and veg that are great for our mental health and well-being and putting together a lovely recipe. And we also welcome back our resident guest Anna Kennedy for an update on what is happening in the autism world and to talk about the importance of parents with children with disabilities taking time out. And of course we have our Behind the Fame section with Helen Ashard which is all about good and positive news. Now back to our main theme for today, absent fathers. As more and more studies are done around fatherhood, it's becoming clearer how important dads are to a child's development. According to an article in the Huffington Post, father-child relationships, positive, negative or absent, have wide ranging effects on children going on into their adulthood, with father involvement having a big impact on children's physical, emotional, social, cognitive and academic development. Low father contact is correlated with many negative outcomes for children. Last year, the parliamentary inquiry into parenting and social mobility concluded that fathers are an important resource in early years child development, which is conductive to bringing about social mobility. Well, what do you think about the topic? Mona says, sometimes I wake up missing my father so much, then my heart breaks a little more because he chooses not to be in my life. Random Flex feels like he's got it covered. He says, played on the streets, don't need a pat on the back or hand holding, I got my own back. Taviante Queen says, I am a survivor and I became a good, smart, passionate, beautiful person on my own. PSY says, I have never met my dad, passed away when I was a couple of months old. Now I don't know how to play father figure to my daughter. And Mialani has a different take on absent fathers. He says, some of us have fathers, but they are not with us emotionally. They don't mentor or educate us. I'm on my own. Durul Cathy says, before you guys rant at your absent father, please hear both sides of the story. Well, thank you for your opinions. And if you have anything that you would like to say about absent fathers, do get in touch with us. You can tweet us at Chrissy B Show or leave a message on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. And of course, we also love to get comments from you that watch our previous episodes. And Pamela Cowlin says, thank you for your videos. I have been having anxiety and depression problems due to my frustrations with my dyspraxia difficulties. With mind, organization and time, you indeed are saviors. Keep going. And she says, message out there to fellow anxiety sufferers. I know things can seem a nightmare and as if you will never will escape from it but trust me there is always a solution to every problem these fear feelings will go away way of the universe everything is temporary so thank you very much for that comment so now let's go to dr audrey tang for her input on absent fathers Welcome to the show, Audrey. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Chrissy. So, some important questions that we have for you here today. So, yeah. first of all, can you tell us about the effects of absent fathers on children? Well, the research is not very positive, unfortunately. Um, what they found is when they have researched uh, juvenile crime, truancy, um, homelessness, they found somewhere between 70 to 90 percent of people wow. have grown up without a father. However, that is 70 to 90 of people who are homeless or in, in yeah. criminal pursuits. Yeah. It's not necessarily every single person. It doesn't go, it doesn't work that way around. Mm -hmm. um, also, they found that um, when it comes to girls as well, girls growing up without a father do tend to be a little bit more sexualized a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. So that can be quite damaging too. So unfortunately, it's not, it's not amazingly positive. However, it is worth remembering, um, and this is from the BPS, the British Psychological Society, mm -hmm. they've, they've looked 
at this and they've said, well, there are many successes of people who've grown up without a father as well. Yeah, so yeah. let's not d disregard that altogether. Um, Barack Obama being one of the most famous people mm -hmm. to have grown up without a father. Um, however, they do say whilst it's having a father, there's no guarantee of success. An absent father is not necessarily a prescription for failure either, okay. so we do need to keep those things in mind. Yeah. Um, what can happen as well is if a father is missing or if it, any of the parents is in a way, um, that can cause other issues. There's no longer two incomes, for example, yeah, yeah. or um, it might well be that one parent is unable to provide for the family as well as give as much time to nurturing and mm. looking after that child as they would want to. So there's a lot of other social factors that can go into children who have grown up with an absent father or an absent parent mm -hmm. behaving perhaps against society's wishes. And in terms of um, the effects on a child, if say for example the father dies and that's why they're absent as opposed to just sort of walking out on the family, mm -hmm. is it kind of are the effects the same? Does it affect the child the same or is it better, worse? What, what would you say? Uh, research would suggest that um, it's harder for a child to adjust to divorce rather than um, the death of a father. Okay. And this may be because of how the people around them take that situation. Mm -hmm. When it comes to divorce, especially if it is very acrimonious and very painful, then you've got a parent who is also get, going through all of that and mm -hmm. a child can't necessarily, it, well, they'll pick up on that. They, they mm -hmm. won't necessarily understand what's going on. Also, in a divorce, you may have a situation where a father keeps popping back into the life of the child and then okay. going out again. Yeah, and that <laughs> can be quite difficult yeah. too. So uh, the finality of death, although as tragic as it is, there's that closure yeah. and that mm -hmm. can be mm -hmm. at least easier to manage. Audrey, thank you so much and we'll see you again next week. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. So now it's time to catch up with Helena Shard in today's Behind the Fame. Welcome to the show, Helena. Thank you, Chrissy. So this is our Behind the Fame section, everyone, where we talk about good news. We do talk about yes. good news, or different news, or yes. lots of different news. So this is a, I'm starting with a negative turned into a positive sort of. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know whether you've heard about the black macaque monkeys in no. Indonesia. No. It sort done. of is a little bit of a, of a sad story in a way, Well, for photographer David Slater, who, who's a, a conservation photographer. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he found himself being sued by a monkey. Oh which has left him broke. But what happened was he, he went out to highlight the plight of the macaque monkeys because yeah. they were down to something like a couple of thousand. Uh -huh. This was a good few years ago. And he actually trained the monkeys to take a photograph of themselves. Oh, okay. Anyway, the photograph was picked up and used on social media and everywhere. And he was trying to monitor it. Mm -hmm. What happened was it's, um, it's called PETA and it's an organization that, that works on behalf of monkeys for ethical treatment, etc. I think it's yeah. absolutely ridiculous. And it was found that the monkey owned the copyright oh. of the picture. Now, the, I know, so he, lo he lost so much money as well. Oh, he, no. he was sort of thinking, oh, I'm going to be a dog walker or I'm going to do something else because this is silly. But the, the good thing about it is that he'd wanted to highlight the plight of the macaque monkeys. Which and of course, yeah. years and years later, everyone's talking about yeah, it because yeah. it's the most ridiculous thing. <laughs> and the actual locals, they used to eat them. They used to roast the monkeys. They didn't oh, think anything no. of them. But now they love them. They, they, oh, they call okay. them, they so call so them no selfie monkeys. monkeys then. So there's now thousands and thousands and oh, so lovely. many of them. Oh, which wonderful. is really, really quite okay. sweet. I feel Aww. sorry for David Slater though, but hopefully yeah. the fame will have yes. you know, taken him somewhere, yes. which is good. <laughs> and now moving on to suicide prevention, the charity Samaritans, mm -hmm. um, calling on all hairdressers and barbers across the UK to help let people know that listening is the biggest skill you really you know, can give. Mm -hmm. And there's a new uh, campaign that's come out called The Big Listen which is amazing. And they've teamed up, this is the Samaritans, with Lions Barber Collective. Okay. And it's really, it's all about suicide prevention. And they're using hairdressers and barbers because obviously they spend a lot of their time listening and talking. Mm -hmm. Something like 2,000 hours a year or something in the UK. Mm -hmm. I think they make up like 1% of the work, workforce. And Stephen Webb from Gogglebox, do you know yeah. the one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was talking about how, you know, 
they go through so much chatting to people and it's just a skill that they want to pass on and want everyone to sort of join in. Uh, Johnny Benjamin, mm -hmm. who we know well, uh, he's added that obviously when Neil Laybourne helped him, yeah. that it, it's, it's an amazing skill and emphasising the powerful power behind it. And I think Neil Laybourne actually, who campaigns with him, um, said something really quite sweet, which is, the more we really listen to each other, the more we empathise, which can go a long way in making us a kinder and more inclusive society. That's which right. I think is. I mean, sometimes really people, people kind of think, well, I can't really help because I'm not a mental health expert, but you don't have to be. Sometimes it's just a little something that you could say to someone that mm. could change their mind from yeah. committing suicide if of they were course. even contemplating that. And that's just funny you mentioned the hairdresser because I, I sometimes get it the other way around in, in terms well, of so like when, I, when I go somewhere <laughs> or if I'm getting have a makeup done or hair done, they end up talking to me as well about, about things. So it can go yeah. either way really. Yeah. Whether you're like maybe the customer in a place no, and, then, and then, you know, someone's... Chatty. Yeah, you, as long as you're talking because you can... It's an opportunity, isn't it? Rather than being Absolutely. stuck on your phone. Yeah, it's nothing. Talk, just have a chat. I yeah, think the whole thing know. is called shush as well, and it's supposed yeah. to give people the skills to, you know, ask open-ended questions and yeah, things like that, right. which is, which is really great. Have we run out of time? We have. That went so Anyway, quickly. thank you so much. Thank you as always. And we'll see you again next week for a bumper show. Absolutely. To that. We'll tell you more about that later, guys. Yeah. All right, good. Thank you. All right, guys. So after the break, I'll be speaking to our real-life story guest, Paolo Mateos. But first. What percentage of absent fathers pay nothing towards raising their children? Is it A, 30%, B, 40%, or C, 50%? Find out the answer right after this break. To the Chrissy B show everyone. Now before the break I asked you what percentage of absent fathers pay nothing towards raising their children? Is it A 30%, B 40% or C 50%? The answer unfortunately is C 50% according to an article in The Guardian. Well now I'm joined by my special guest for today and that's Paula Mateus. Welcome to the show Paula. Hi Chris, thank you for having me. No problem. Big beautiful smile right now <laughs> but growing up wasn't very easy for you at all was it no. so you had an absent father yeah T tell us what life was like first with your dad and mm -hmm. when he was around what was going on so when he was around it was amazing uh, mm -hmm. it was me my mom and my dad as i was the only child that got all the attention in the world uh, we'd do everything together we'd go to a park together we'd you know do everything we we're a normal family mm -hmm. and um you know he was my everything so he'd read me bedtime stories, he'd buy me gifts, he'd take me to the barbers, we got to that extent of taking me barbers? to the barbers. Oh, with him? <laughs> with him. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> with him. Yeah. Um, so it was always, I was always included in whatever he'd do, I'd always be around. Okay. So it was always something amazing to have him around. How did you feel with him? With him, oh, I felt, felt like, you know, the princess. I yeah. felt, you know, comfortable. I felt, I felt, that sense of belonging. I mm -hmm. felt as though, you know, I have my dad, I have my mom. Everything was just, it, everything just made sense. So it, it was always very nice. So your dad is a girl, really? Then, really, really. Yeah, up okay. until today. All right. <laughs> All right, so then, then what happened? What happened uh, then obviously, uh, things started to change. My parents, before they didn't used to argue, all of a sudden they started to argue. My dad would always, he unfortunately, he still thought he was single. So he'd always go out clubbing, um, and he'd come home late, drunk. So then that's when the argument started. He'd come home and then there'll be arguments, there'd be fights. I remember certain fights that they'd have that just doesn't leave my head. Mm -hmm. Times where, you know, they'd threaten each other and there were times that I, I had to call the police or my parents really? to stop them from fighting. Um, wow. I remember this one incident where the police officer was in my bedroom, you know, trying to comfort me, telling me everything's going to be okay. How old were you at this point? Do you remember? At that point, I was around seven. Really? Wow. Seven, eight. I still remember the pajamas I had. I still remember everything. Mm. It doesn't leave my mind. And I saw my mom, you know, being taken to jail. And it, to me, your mom being taken? Because mm -hmm, my mom was threatening my dad. Oh, okay. She was using something to threaten him. Okay. They were fighting. Right. It got okay. a bit too much. So I called the police, my mom went to, to prison for a day. So it, it, from something so nice, it, it just it went a bit pear-shaped. Did you, did you ever sort of try and speak to your mom and dad and ask yeah. them what was happening? I know you're only young, mm -hmm. but 
what what kind of conversations did you have? I'd, with I'd ask, I'd ask. I mean, I'd ask, you know, what's going on. Sometimes when I wouldn't see my dad around, I'd ask where my dad was. But it was that thing of they never really spoke to me about it because mm -hmm. obviously they thought she's a child, she doesn't understand. But I understood what was going on. I understood, you know, that at one point there was love, at another point we weren't getting on as we used to. Mm -hmm. So I'd ask, but they'd disregard what I'd ask. They'd tell me, oh, you know, daddy's gone away for a little bit or sometimes they wouldn't say anything. There were times where out of anger, my mom would express what was going on, but she'd, unfortunately, she'd blame me. So she'd be, really? you know, yeah, so she'd say, oh, it's your fault, this is happening. Uh, without knowing, she was saying things out of anger. So she'd mm -hmm. say, it's your fault. Um, sometimes my dad, when he'd be drunk, he'd, he'd blurt out, uh, you know, things. He'd say things that wouldn't make sense as well. So we never actually had a normal conversation about it. It was little, okay. little things being thrown when people went to. And then your dad eventually left, didn't he? Yes. What, then, what, what age were you when he left? When he left, I think I was around nine, ten. Okay. I can't really remember what age exactly, but he he left. Um, at the time, obviously he. He got deported back mm -hmm. from where we came, where we're from. Um, obviously, it was a hard, hard thing to go through because I had to go and visit him in prison before he got deported. Okay. So I remember going to prison with my mom to visit my dad. Um, I remember he wasn't around anymore. So it, it, that's when that's when he got he left. He left us. Okay. Yeah. And then. Obviously, like he's, he, he was like the, your hero yeah. around all the time, had all that attention as a child. Now he's nowhere. You can't see him anymore, basically. Mm -hmm. He's in another country. So how did that affect you growing up then? It affected me a lot, like really a lot. Because in the beginning, he started calling. In the beginning, he'd, he'd still make some sort of contact. He'd, he'd call to say hi, and then after a while, he wouldn't call anymore. So to me, that was kind of like, okay, but what's going on mm. um, it affected me because that, that attention I didn't have that attention anymore because my mom then started working you know long shifts to try and provide for me yeah. and for yeah. her mm -hmm. so I wouldn't see my mom that often sometimes I'd be left home alone um, sometimes she'd leave me some food and she'd okay at this time eat do this do that lock the doors because there was no one else I could stay with so it, it really it, it, I started getting annoyed at her because then I started blaming her. Because mm -hmm. then I, I, I would just remember the arguments that they'd have. And I, I'd, I'd think, oh, this is your fault that you'd have the arguments. Yeah. If you'd just left him, I'd always take my dad's side. Because mm -hmm. he was my hero. Bless my mom. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd always always take his side. And, you know, I started, getting, I started getting angry towards her. I started blaming her. When she wasn't around, I started thinking, well, you don't love me. There were times that I, I'd tell her, you don't love me. And that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. And it, it became even more frustrating because me and my mom, we didn't develop a relationship because she was never around. And she was never around. I was always angry at her. So we didn't have conversations. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. when we had a conversation, it was do this, do that, do that. It was never, how are you? How are you? Mm -hmm. What is going on with you? And inside, I was, I was, I felt like I didn't belong anymore. Because before, I had a family. But now, where's my dad? My yeah. mom, she said she's not around. So I started really feeling, really, um, how can I put it? Like I didn't belong. Like I, I was all alone. And what, I mean, you developed some mental health issues after this, didn't you? Can you tell yeah. us about those as well? So then it got to a point that um, I started to develop strange behaviours. Um, it's one thing being a perfectionist. It's which another, you are, right? Which I am. Yeah. It's another thing having you wanting everything in the same place. And if, you, if it's not in the same place, you start to feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So I developed OCD. So I had to, um, certain things always had to be in the same place. I had to check the doors constantly before I went to sleep because I always had this thing in my mind, oh, if I don't check the door, something's going to happen to my family. So that's okay. how it started in the beginning. So I have this in mind, I want to protect my family, which it didn't exist. You were kissing doors at one point, Yeah, right? yeah, it came to the point that I kissed doors, I'd touch doors, I'd kiss doors, I'd pick up hair from the floor. And this, you know, happened for a very, 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 very long time, to the point of there was a friend that moved in with us, and she was my, she was a friend of mine, and she had a lot of hair. And I really, she, she did. And I'd made her life hell because I would, every time she'd come, I'd always, you know, pick up the hair after, I'd follow her around the house. And she knew I had an issue. Yeah. 
I knew I had an issue, but I didn't know what it was, and it wasn't something I could control. It was just this thing that would tell me, okay, pick up hair from the floor, kiss doors, close this, do that. This everything has to be perfect, or else something's gonna happen to your family. Wow. So, and I never spoke to my mom about it. Never. I never sat down and said, Mom, there's something weird going on with me. It was just, like I said, I felt like I was by myself. And this issue was something only I knew about. Obviously, people around, they saw I that there, see, was, yeah. there was something wrong. Mm -hmm. But it was like, I don't, I didn't even know what it was. Only after that, I realized, look, this was OCD. This was mental health issues. And only after. But whilst it was going on, mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was. Did anything else happen to you? How did you feel within yourself? Were you were you feeling low as well, sad? Yeah, I felt low, I felt depressed. There were times that I even contemplated suicide at a very young age. Mm -hmm. There was times that, you know, I, I couldn't sleep at night. I was afraid. All of this just because of what had happened to my family. There was times that I, I, I just felt like no one understood me. Mm -hmm. Like I was a weirdo, let's put it that way. No one got me, no one understood me. I just, I felt down. I really did, and I'd cry a lot. I'd cry a lot, but I wouldn't cry in front of people. I'd cry when I'd, by, I'd be by myself. Um, so yeah. The worst moment for you, Paula? Worst moment? <laughs> I think the worst moment. I think for me it was more, because obviously then I, 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 this happened when I was quite young, then I grew up, and it's like I had another phase in my life mm -hmm. where I didn't want to be by myself anymore. I didn't want to be considered as weird anymore, so I started doing what everyone else was doing. So then I become, I went to the other extreme. I became loud. I started copying my friends. I started, you know, getting this personality that wasn't me. And the worst moment that really everything clicked and I realized, look, I'm not, I'm not well. I need, I need some sort of help. Was when I got, uh, how can I say? Friends of mine, apparently, mm -hmm. who were friends of mine, they came to my house to beat me up because I'd, I'd built this personality, this this character, this person that I really wasn't, yeah. this loud, this you know bold person that I wasn't. I got into trouble because I said something I shouldn't mm -hmm. have, and a group of thirty young people came to my house oh my to goodness. beat me up, and I was home alone as well. And they were supposed to be my friends, so that's when I realized, look. This, did they beat you up? No, they didn't. The neighbours came and they, they, you know, called them out. And I was really scared. I was really, really, really wow. scared. And at the time I was only uh, 12. Mm -hmm. I was 12 years old. So that's when I realised, okay. Because I went to the to the uh, completely different extreme. From being someone very quiet, I went mm -hmm. to someone completely loud. Just to try and find that sense of belonging. Yeah. Just to try and fit in. Just to have that love that I had before when I was with my dad, with, mm -hmm. with my family. So I really tried to look for it in many places. Okay. And how are things now? Because you got help in the end, didn't yes. you? you? Did you join, a, was it youth group? You yes, joined? I joined yeah. a youth okay. group. And, and then what happened? After and then that? I received the help. I, I, I started learning how to overcome the shyness, how to overcome, you know, how to be myself. I learned mm -hmm. how to be myself, how to have this inner love. Yes, I do need love for my parents and I do need that care and it is important. But at the same time, I lack that love within me. Because yeah. when you have this love within you, even if it's not given to you, you still have it. And because you have it, you also give to others, regardless yeah. if they give back or not. Mm -hmm. So that's what I started to learn in this youth group. I started to be uh, myself confident i started to you know i overcame the the ocd i overcame the mental health issues they they guided me on how to overcome mm -hmm. the issues that i was going through and i became a happy person i became someone that um is is bold someone that is is happy I, Completely changed, completely, completely changed. I can vouch for that. This girl is like, she's a good friend of mine and she, she's, I don't say she's crazy, that's the wrong word to use, but she's a lot of laughs and like, you know, what you're, the person you're describing before isn't the person that I know yeah. now. So I can see, you know, from what you've explained, how much, how big the change is. Yeah. But let me ask you about your, your dad now. How yeah. was your relationship with your dad? It's good, it's yeah. really good. Even though we're not, it's funny, we're not um, in the same country. Mm -hmm. But our relationship has just grown. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's, he, he's realized that I've grown as well. Not mm -hmm. that I, I'm not his princess or anymore, but he's realized that I've grown and our relationship has grown because of that. Yeah. 
So we speak, we, we talk, we laugh. You know, he un yeah. I understand him more now. Yeah. And also yeah. I understand my mom more now. Um, I, I obviously, I, I overcame the, the hate that I had, the grudges that I had towards her. I started to understand that it wasn't her fault. Yeah. So my relationship with them has changed. And like I said, because I found what love is, you know, I found that in the love I give. Yeah. Even yeah. sometimes when they're stressed and they, 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 they can't show it, I still, I, I've learned to give to them. So mm -hmm. Lovely. it's nice. Paolo, thank you so much for sharing your story today with thank us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. All right, guys, so don't go away because after the break, I'll be joined by nutritionist Severine Menem to talk about the best seasonal fruits and veg out there that are great for your mental and physical health. And she'll also be showing us a lovely recipe for a lentil and feta salad. And she will also be answering all of your nutrition questions, including this one. I stopped drinking fizzy drinks years ago and generally just drink mineral water. However, I also love sparkling water on occasion. Are there any risks with drinking sparkling water? Find out the answer right after this break. CB and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10 p.m. on my channel Sky203. Visit ChrissyBshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page The Chrissy B Show. Welcome back to the Chrissy B Show, everyone, the TV program that looks after your mental health and well-being. So now I'm delighted to welcome back one of our regular nutritionists, and that is, of course, Severine Menem. Hello, Severine. Hi, Christine. Love it to have you back on. Thank you for being back. <laughs> so, Severine, before we get into the recipe that you're going yes. to make today, can you tell us about maybe some of the seasonal fruit and veg that's out there and why it's good for us? Yes. Well, between June and October, we are very lucky to have a wide variety of fruits and vegetables. I'm not okay. going to mention them all because they are so uh, numerous. Mm -hmm. But there is one in particular that I'm going to speak about today, okay. which is one of my favorites. And it is Globe Artichoke. Do okay. you like Globe Artichoke? I do like, yes, I do. Oh, good. Yes. I'm very pretty easy to please. I like most vegetables and, and fruits. Uh, research has shown that it is the, the, the vegetable with the most uh, antioxidants. Okay. All right. So this is really that. help to really good to fight um, free radicals, okay. to fight cancer, but also it has a very um, good thing to do with uh, indigestion okay. when you eat extra indigestion mm. and um, and also to regulate cholesterol. So we're going to be making something today. Okay. Tell us about what you're going to put together for us. Yeah, we are going to do um, prepare a vegetarian dish today. Okay. Which is a salad um, with all these beautiful, colorful mm. ingredients. Yeah. Yes. And um, I've picked this one because that's one of the um, salad that I was eating when I was pregnant. Because okay. when you're pregnant, you really need folate, which is a natural folic acid, mm -hmm. and iron, and selenium, and, and magnesium. And in this salad, you've got all these beautiful uh, vitamins and minerals. Okay. That's why I picked this one. And also, it's always nice to have salads in summer. Yes. And yeah. you can prepare it, and then you can keep it in the fridge and have it the following day. Yeah, so you've got a very right. nice lunch to go to work. So that's what we are going to do. Okay. So um, you start with uh, green lentils. Mm -hmm. um, it's a recipe, I would say, either for two if you may make it the main meal or for four. Okay. So here there is a cup of dry green lentils, which is about uh, 150 or 200 grams. Mm -hmm. And it doubles in size and volume when, when it's cooked. So okay. here it's cooked. And then you add whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> so, so the lentils are the base. Basically. Lentils yeah. are, is the base, yeah, right. because okay. it's um, it's got proteins. Yeah. It's got the fibers, and it's got um, um, iron, zinc, magnesium, okay, selenium, okay. and yeah. folate, as I mentioned okay. before. So uh, red pepper for the color. Yes. Full of vitamin C and vitamin A. Yeah. Vitamin A is really good for. Um, 
for the eyes, for the retina, mm -hmm. and also when uh, the cells multiply to make sure that it, it's yeah. it's going well. So when okay. you're pregnant, it's really uh, that looks lovely already, doesn't it? Yes. With the colors. Yeah. I love the colors. Okay. So next, we're going to add the onions, the red onions. Red onions always better than the white. The no, more, I would say it's, it's just same. different. Um, I tend to cry less <laughs> when I cut onions. So okay. that's why they had more vitamins because of the color. <laughs> yes. No, that, 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 that may be true, but if, you know, <laughs> if you keep changing. You know, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Uh, so, um, so yeah, red onions. Uh, onions, vitamin C, B vitamins, and it's also always a good um, antioxidant okay. and antibacterial and so yeah. on. Uh, so really good. What do you want to put next? The olives. Olives. I love the olives. good fats. Yes. The really good fats. I love these. These Some dried tomatoes. Some tomatoes. Yes. Do you know that actually very few um, sun-dried tomatoes are sun-dried? Oh really? They're dehydrated. So <laughs> okay. Dehydrated. dehydrated big, tomatoes. big ovens. Oh. There are very few, um, unless you go to, you know, I don't know, Sicily or Italy or in all the small villages. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that so, was lovely. Um, yeah. Uh, shall we add feta cheese? Cheese. Feta cheese. So feta cheese. Benefits. Benefits. Another source of protein. Okay. Yes. Um, like all dairies. Omega-3. So omega-3, really good for really? inflammation. Yes. Wait, first I'm surprised. Yeah, it is a bit surprising, but it has some omega-3. Of, of course, not as much as all, all the oily fish we've mentioned yeah, in the past, yeah. but it has but some. But still, because sometimes people tend to feel guilty about eating cheese. And Why? It's a pleasure. Because oh, no, everyone makes it sound like it's so bad. And then like, well, it then depends. People, lovely people like you come on and just tell us, just eat it because it's good no. for us. And that's, I love that. Well, okay. I would say don't eat all the type of che cheese yeah, because some, some cheese are really rubbish, but like <laughs> feta cheese, you know, all the traditional uh, cheese that have yeah. been going on for ages and ages. You know, they're usually good ones okay, because good. people, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. they know how to do that. So omega-3, then you've got vitamin A and all the B vitamins. Okay. So all the B vitamins is all for the energy. Yeah, it's really cool. And you've got calcium, of course, like all dairies, selenium, which helps with the thyroid health mm. and zinc. Okay. Zinc is, is, has more to do with autoimmunity, so just uh, fight any any bad bad thing going on. Okay. Okay. So what else do we have? Should oh, I cut a yes. For you? Please pass. How much should I cut for you? Um, a third, I would say, a quarter okay. to a third. No, so so parsley is a very high, um, a very good herb for vitamin C. Mm -hmm. um, You've got two types of parsley. You've got the, the one with the flat leaves, like this yeah. one, or the curly one. And um, the one with the flat leaves has a lot more flavor than the other yeah. one. The other ones I tend to use more for garnish, because yes. it looks pretty. Exactly, um, so I like this one better. Okay, just shove that in as well. So, Sorry, I mean place it gently in, not shove it in. Yes. And it also has, uh, surprisingly, some calcium and magnesium and oh. iron, which, uh, yeah, you wouldn't think. But because it's just usually a few leaves, that okay. that's okay. See, it looks oh, so looks lovely. Good. Should we plate it up, Severine? Yes. Oh, we haven't. Uh, oh, forgot the lemon. Up. Yeah, lemon. So uh, seasoning, we can add lemon. We can add olive oil, um, pepper, salt. You know the usual. It depends what you like best. It's got me working today, Severine. It's got yes. Me. Is that enough? Or should we do the other one as well? Um, yeah, let's start with that. Okay. And then. Let's mix a bit more. Just put a little bit of oil in there. Okay. Just, Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. Good. This smells absolutely delicious, people. Yes. I'm not joking. I'm not just saying this because it's my show, but it really does. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it? I love the smell Can of Can the um, camera crew smell that salad for me? Yeah. The Very nice. smell of um, parsley. Mmm. So is it? So like I said, you can have it as a main meal, you can have it as a starter. Yes. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> We've got half the lentils on the thing, but it's fine. <laughs> Sorry about that. And that's, that's lovely. That's enough for the plate. So Marie, yeah. thank you so much. I'm going to try it during the break. I want to yes. do it now because otherwise I'll get, too, I'll get too distracted. Okay. But before you go, we do yes. have a few minutes just to um, okay. answer some viewer questions. So I shall be tucking into that salad okay. afterwards. So our that. first question is, uh, mm -hmm. this viewer is asking, I stopped drinking fizzy drinks years ago and generally just drink mineral water. However, I also love sparkling water on occasion. Are there any risks with drinking sparkling water? 
Okay, sparkling water is only still water which has been added with carbon dioxide under high pressure okay. and sometimes a few minerals like uh, sodium and so on. So technically it's not as bad as soda mm -hmm. but for, pe for someone who has a problem with gastrointestinal uh, issues like IBS or okay. natural bloating that's not something to do. It's not as good as st still water but okay. it's, it's not really bad you know soda is really bad because of the sugar yeah. but still yeah. water is okay. Um, but it has two good benefits. When you drink some sparkling water you know because of the gas it makes you feel full a bit quicker okay so yeah. that could be interesting right. and the second one is because um, of the carbon dioxide raises the acidity in the stomach mm -hmm. it helps with the digestion oh, because the stomach has to be acidic in okay. order to digest well yeah. and also some uh, minerals like calcium needs to be in an acidic environment to be absorbed by the body okay so it could oh. be good Ooh, we've got 35 seconds i don't know if we can actually okay. cover this one let's okay. see someone recently told me that soy milk isn't good for you i'm confused because i thought plant-based milk was nutritious yes. can you please shed some light on this also which milk would you recommend okay um in 30 seconds <laughs> all right as much as you can go um soy milk uh, plant-based is always better but in the case of soy i would uh, i would avoid it really yeah for me many reasons um first one Soy is uh, allergen, so mm -hmm. a lot of people will be um, have food intolerance to soy without knowing that. Secondly, 90% um, of the soy crops is uh, genetically modified, and we know it's really wow. bad. Yes, okay. for health. Uh, then, when you look at the components of compo uh, the composition of uh, soy milk, you can see some very nasty stuff like carrageenan, mm -hmm. which um, increase the inflammation and also um, digestive upsets. And uh, oh. there's also sh sugar in the milk, so not great. Um, next, for people with thyroid issue, soy is a no-no. Okay, definitely. Um, another two. two oh my minutes. goodness! <laughs> yes. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Um, so is a phytoestrogen, which means that it's, it's an estrogen coming from a plant. And in the body, you know, we've got estrogen as a hormone. So it might um, have an impact in our, our hormone imbalance. imbalance. Oh, so okay. sometimes it doesn't matter, but some, for some women, it can have an impact. So okay. it's not great. And last but not least, um, um, soy has, um, is high in uh, phytic acid and phytic acid prevents the absorption of a number of nutrients such as calcium, magnesium, zinc and iron which most people are usually low in yeah. so they have to be careful with that but also for the digestion um, it prevents the action of pepsin and amylase which are two uh, digestive enzymes that helps wow. for the digestion of protein and um, starches. Wow. <laughs> yes. I didn't know any of that. Wow. But uh, fermented soy is really good. Fermented and soy. Fermented soy. And I would really recommend it. Uh, but what, what other milk would you think? Well, okay. obviously not soy, but okay. what milk would you recommend? Um, I would actually recommend organic full fat milk. Okay. It's good, but not in great quantity. Uh, all the nut milks are good. Mm -hmm. Oat milk are good. Yeah. Um, stay away from rice milk because it's, it may have arsenic. Oh my goodness. Yes. All right, I think we can do a whole segment about milk. Yeah, but maybe that's we the can do that, for but next always one. check. I mean, all, organic is always best and always okay. check all the ingredients because sometimes you've got a very bad surprises and you can okay. find the, the same nasty ingredients in yeah. the other milk. Thank you so much, <laughs> Samarine, and we'll see you again next Thank time. You. Thank you. All right, guys, so after the break, I'll be joined by my resident guest, Anna Kennedy, for an update on what is happening in the autism world and to talk about the importance of parents with children with disabilities taking time out for themselves. And in line with our main theme today, I'll be giving some tips on ways to reconnect as an absent father. So don't go away. Welcome back to the Chrissy B Show, everyone. And now I'm delighted to welcome back one of our resident guests, and that is Anna Kennedy. Welcome back to the show, Anna. Thank you for having me back, and I'm um, really excited to be here again. So tell us what's been happening in the autism world. Well, since our last appearance on the Chrissy B Show with our lovely Ryan, our yes. young charity patron, a lot of parents contacted me saying how overwhelmed they were by how positive he was, even though he'd mm. been bullied. Yeah. Um, it gave them hope. Um, a lot of parents contacted me about the highlights of Autism's Got Talent, yeah. saying 
a lot of parents actually got quite emotional about it because oh. you know they they saw the wow factor talent that these children and adults yeah. had yeah. and also asked me where can we see the show how can we enter our child or our adult oh, that's lovely. so yeah we're working on autumn's got talent now um, in Basildon, which is a road mm. show so we're excited about that in october okay brilliant so today you're going to be speaking about something very very important as well it is which i'm not very good at <laughs> But she will be. <laughs> tell us what is it that's that's very important that you'd it's, like to share. Um, talking about parents taking time out, which I must admit I'm not very good at that at all. Yes, um, yes, I'm always having a go at her parents. <laughs> yes. um, I suppose it started with me that you know having two boys who are on the autumn spectrum, you're always so focused on mm. making sure that you know everything's okay with them, that um, school's okay, going through the system because it's quite complicated when you have a child with SEN. That basically you know you've got to go through the education and healthcare plan, you've mm -hmm. got the disability living allowance, you know you're writing letters, you're going to yeah. appointments, you're going to see doctors, and it's quite stressful for parents. Mm. And I know autism is quite challenging for the individual itself but it's also challenging for the parent because yeah. you are the glue that holds the family together mm -hmm. and I know by my two boys they're very much in tune with the way I feel really um, oh. so say for example I you know that I don't get a lot of sleep so yeah. three to four hours a night it's been particularly bad these last few weeks Angelo hasn't been going to sleep till sort of half past two three o'clock in the morning okay. and it can really take a toll on you especially yeah. when you've yeah. got to go to work and you've got to be alert so um, my boys always know when I'm I might be having a headache or I might be feeling, you know, a little bit, oh, I'm just so mm. tired. And Angelo, even though he's non-verbal, he'll come up to me and he'll just stroke oh, the side of sweet. my face. So that's yeah, his yeah. sort of way of knowing, mum, what's the matter? Yeah, or, yeah. And Patrick will say to me, um, are you okay, mum? What's the matter? And they can become anxious because you're not feeling well, if you yeah, like, because yeah, yeah. you're the person that nurtures them. You're the person that guides them. You're the person that gives them the advice. So you've yeah, got yeah. to try and be on top form. So you're all the to time. yourself, first of all, but also it does help when, you, when you're well rested they will benefit as well. Right? And it can be difficult, yeah. especially now during the summer holidays for families that, you know, might have one or two, or even, I know a parent that's got five children with autism. Really? Yeah, could wow. you imagine trying to keep them occupied? Because um, a lot of children and adults really work well with structure. So obviously if they're going to a school or they're going mm. to a special school for children with autism, they can keep that structure in place. But it's really difficult for families to try yeah. and keep structures. So you're just doing the best you can. Um, so a lot of parents are saying to me, you know, we were talking about the out of school clubs. That is when a parent could have a little bit of respite. Yeah. But I know a parent now is so stressed because normally she would send her son to um, two weeks play scheme, but it's been closed now because of the cuts. So she oh. is now thinking, you know, I'm trying to keep my son occupied or she might have a part-time job. She might be tired like me. So what I'm saying is what you need to do I need to take the advice myself. Well, you have to now because you're speaking on TV about it. So yeah, no, you have just to. Just have a little bit of time out yeah. for yourself. So for me, it's Zumba. So mm. on a Thursday, I have what's called my autism free zone. And I can think about nothing. And there's just something about dance for me that recharges yeah. my batteries. And I can really sort of let go and, you know, like really sort of... And of, of course, we know you're a great dancer as well. Yeah. Um, Strictly. Yes. Yeah, I did Strictly. But it was just like... I discovered, because like for 11 years I didn't do any dance at all because mm. I was so focused on my boys. And then when we started the school, I wanted to teach the children with autism dance. So I thought, yes. let's see how it's going to work. And when I started dancing with the children, I thought, now I know what's <laughs> missing out of my life. I really need to do this. Yeah. So what I'm saying to parents is, even if it's go for a cup of tea, go for an ice cream, go for a walk, something. go in the it's bathroom, something. shut the door, jump and have a scream if you have to. <laughs> I've done that before. I've even yeah. gone outside on Angelo's trampoline and had like a really good old jump. But you've got to do something <laughs> for yourself. And it's right. really, really important. Now, Anna, you actually spoke to some parents as well to find out what they do for some time out. So should we just take a look at this right now? Yeah. So tell me, we're talking about the importance of well-being um, for parents who've got children with autism. So what do you to have, do to have time out? Well, I've got uh, a 12-year-old daughter and a 14-year-old son with autism. Um, and it's not easy. And it's really hard trying to take any time out, especially with all his needs. There's quite a lot of time. He needs one-to-one -one support. But I know that it's so important that I go out, do something for myself, and spend time with my daughter and husband as well. My son, Christopher, he's just turned 12. And and he's on the autism spectrum. 
Um, I find it really important to have some me time for myself so I can recharge and, and, and just do something for me. And I've been doing my, um, my and my husband's family tree for about 13 years now. Oh. And I've got about 2,000 people on there. But I find it's something I can lose myself in and really find out about me, my family and everything. I'm ready for when my son grows up. Um, I do go out with my friends. Um, that's really important, as, as, especially as a single mum. Um, I have Ryan, who's 16, got Asperger's, and little Lucy, who's five. So it can be quite tough trying to juggle between the two of them with their different needs. Um, but I just find that having time to yourself, whether it be an hour, five minutes, uh, it's good for you and it's good for them too. Um, they do. They need that. It's good for them to know that mum's looking after themselves too. I've got an older son who's got autism and it's, it, every day is a different day. And I think it's also very important to have that time out, just to have some me time. And um, I visit my local gym. I try and do yoga on a Sunday morning and I try and do a summer class because I think it just burns off the energy. Yeah. You switch off from what's going on at home or what has gone on at home. Yeah. And you just, um, it's having a bit of fun, really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's having fun and you meet people you don't have to sort of think about what's happened. A few weeks ago, um, a lot of us mums got together and supporters of the charity for our annual Zumbathon. It was such fun, and this is where mums were just having some me time. So, Anna, some great comments there. Yeah, a lot of the, um, those are our charity champions. So, um, yeah. what I'm saying to them is, you know, what is it that you do for time out? So it's yeah, great yeah, to yeah. hear what they were doing. So we actually went out for lunch to do that. So that was like a little bit of time out for us. So. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. And actually guys, if you have some ideas, maybe you also are in some difficult circumstances. We are talking about single parents on this, on this program as well, absent fathers. So if maybe you're a single parent and you don't have much time for yourself as well, what do you do maybe that, you know, is good that maybe doesn't take up too much time, but kind of rests your mind and kind of recharges your battery. Do let us know. You can email us on info at chrissybshow.tv. Anna, we can't wait for, to have you back on next time. Thank We're you. We're going to be yep. about another very interesting topic. Yeah, we've got lots. Of, you know what? A lot of parents are saying, oh, can you talk about this? Can you talk about this? Because well, they're so excited that there's yeah. Yeah, finally know, a programme about want, autism. Yeah. Let us know what you, what you guys want to know as well. Brilliant. Thank okay. you. We'll Thank see you, you very again much. next time. Thank you. All right, guys. So now I'm going to be covering my own tips in just a second. So let's get straight to my tip. So there's a lot of reasons why a man decides to leave his family and maybe it was a fear of responsibility, a lack of maturity, maybe a lack of money or just not being ready for a family and we're not here to judge anyone. But there are some men that actually have a change of heart and now they want to actually be involved in their child's life. But how can they start being involved again when the child and mother have a different life completely? So I found this brilliant article on the spruce.com about how to reconnect as an absent father. So how, how, all the points aren't here, but if you do want to have a look at the article, do please to visit their website. But let's go to the first point that I'd like to cover, which is to get stable and show it. So the lack of stability that drove a father to leave in the first place has to be resolved before a father can be a seriously positive influence on a child's life. So the article suggests to get some training or education to get a job and actually stay there and have a place to live as well. And very important, make sure that you are keeping up with responsibilities such as child support so that your involvement is more welcome by your child's mother. The second point they cover in their article is to communicate with your child's mother. So it can be really tough to reconnect with your child's mother, but she is the gateway to the child. So express your desires openly and let her know how you have worked on your stability and personal responsibility as well. Of course, you should apologize if you haven't apologized already and let her know how much you want to be a good influence on your child this time. The third point they cover, to learn about your child. So if you've been an absent father and uninvolved for a long time, you will have a lot of learning to do about your own child. So even as a father, you are coming back as a stranger. So be patient and learn all about them. Um, learn, for example, what they want, what they're interested in. Get on their level and find out about their life, their school, their hobbies, their friends, their pets, maybe their favorite foods, their favorite toys. So putting your child first in the relationship and making it about the child and not about you is very, very important. It's a very important step forward, they say. The next one is very important as well. 
to meet in a safe environment. So remember that you are coming from like a, a stranger position. So you need to make sure that you meet in a safe place. And that could be maybe your child's home when there's other people around, maybe at a grandparent's home, at a park or another public place. So there, there may be, unfortunately be a lot of suspicion about your motives and it will be important to keep the child and their mother feeling safe and comfortable at all times. And don't get upset if they are a bit suspicious. Remember, you know, you left, it's gonna take some time. So make sure you are patient and even if they're kind of a bit funny with you and a bit you know suspicious of you the next point is don't just be a Disneyland dad so there are dads unfortunately who just want to have fun and take the kids to places that maybe the mum can't afford to go and maybe spoil the children rotten only then to send them home to maybe the mum who's had to kind of really scrape by and she has to do you know work a lot she doesn't have all the time to do that so do have fun with your child but mix it with you know other elements of real life and stability so the child sort of knows that dad isn't just the fun one if you see what I mean that mum can be fun as well but she's just got a lot of responsibilities so you shouldn't ever get into that competition thing oh you know my child needs to have fun with me and then go back to their boring mum it shouldn't be that way it's not fair really let's go to the next point which is get on your child's level. So children can actually be intimidated by big men if you're tall and everything, and especially if they don't know you well. So something that they're suggesting is actually get into your child's eye level when communicating with them and use words that they'll understand as well. Don't sort of use big words. Maybe you're not used to speaking to children, but it would be maybe a good idea if you're not used to it to actually speak to some friends with children and just, you know, just get some tips about how to speak to children, the kind of words to use, the kind of language, it could help. The next point is don't try to change your child's world. So whatever your child's world is like, that's their world. So if they feel comfortable with what they know, there's no problem. So don't try and take them too far out of their comfort zone. So for example, your child has certain habits and rituals and things that they like to do. Don't try to come in and just change everything. Just go with the flow and let them kind of get comfortable with you first before maybe kind of addressing any issues that you might find a bit uncomfortable. And the next point is to be consistent and predictable. So, um, you know, children do need consistency and stability. So it's really important for a dad to be that for their child. So don't do any massive surprises, for example, like, you know, you've just met your child and now you're introducing your child to your girlfriend. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just too many things. Or maybe there's plan, you've made some plans and at the last minute you change it or you just spring something on them out of the blue. So just make sure you're consistent that you say, when you plan something, make sure you're there, make sure you're on time and just keep things um, keep things not too not too crazy for them at the beginning and then finally the last part I wanted to cover is to keep your promises so th this one is really important because if you think about it that child and the mum have been they feel like they've been let down and they feel like their trust has been broken so relationships of trust are built by actually making and keeping promises so for example do not make a promise that you can't keep in the first place and actually you know follow through on the ones that you do make so for example if you promise to take a trip to the zoo like uh, one day even if something really important comes up, even if you're offered loads of money to do extra hours at work, don't cancel. Do not cancel. Put that child first. They've been through a lot without you already. So now that you are kind of trying to get back into that child's life, make sure that you're reliable and you sacrifice for them as well. And that's really going to help. Well, everyone, we have reached the end of today's program, but don't forget if you have a story that you would like to share, or maybe you have some comments about this program that you'd like to share with us, please do email us on info at chrissybshow.tv. You can also tweet us at chrissybshow or leave a message on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. And if you'd like to know more about me and the struggles that I had in the past and overcame, you can actually go to my personal website, which is mylifeafterdepression.com. Until next time, bye-bye for now. Well, everyone, we have... Oh, I forgot to turn. <gasps> no, I can turn still, yeah? Yeah. Okay. okay. I want TV. <laughs> <laughs> still hasn't sunk in, has it? <laughs> <laughs> and in line with our main theme today, I'll be giving some tips on ways to reconnect as an absent father. So don't go away. Yes. I'm horrified. I drink soy milk. Don't. Paola, thank you so much for sharing your story today with us. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. All right, don't overdo it. <laughs> Should we start again? <laughs>
really allowed to say that. I am. All right, let's, okay, let's start again. Carla, thank you so much for sharing your story today. Thank you.